Hello and welcome to Danny's Tips. In this episode, you'll learn one of the most popular retouching techniques that can be used in landscape photography, portrait photography, architecture, and more. It's called dodging and burning. And with this technique, you can selectively choose which area of your photo should be brighter or darker. When used correctly, you can completely transform your photos. Photographers use this technique to give their landscape photos a dramatic look. You can even use it to contour a person's face simply by changing the lighting. There's a lot more you can do with this technique. And in this tutorial, you'll learn how to dodge and burn non-destructively. And you'll also learn how to combine it with another technique called luminosity masking for even better results. So if you're interested, keep watching to find out how it's done. You can find the Dodge and Burn tool in the toolbar by clicking and holding on this button here. Let's start with the Dodge tool. In fact, you probably never need to use the Burn tool and you'll see why later. But for now, we're going to stick with the Dodge tool and quickly go over all of its important settings. First, duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J so that you have the original image as a backup. This is the most common way beginners do non-destructive editing. And technically, it is non-destructive, but it's not the best way of doing it. We're just starting off with this so that you can learn how the tools work and then after you'll learn the better way of doing it. So when you're dodging, it's basically a brush that will brighten the areas you paint in. When you're burning, it's doing the opposite which is darkening the areas. And by combining the two, you can enhance your photo by manipulating the lighting. For example, in this image, we can burn the foreground which will dim it and give more focus to the bright area in the top center. We can then selectively dodge the areas that we want to brighten back up. Let's start with the settings. In the options bar, you can change the brush size and hardness by clicking here. For the brush size, most people just set it by pressing the left and right square bracket keys on their keyboard. You'll be changing your brush size a lot, so it's more efficient this way. The brush hardness is basically the sharpness of the edge. For example, if you set it to 100%, you'll get really sharp and hard edges like this. If you set it to 0%, it'll be really soft and it's also safer to use. If you want to change the brush hardness, just hold the shift key while pressing the left or right square bracket keys. This button here in the options bar will bring up the brush panel. One thing that you should do is to remove the spacing option. I'm going to set my brush hardness to 100% so that you can see what's happening. Right now when I paint a line, it appears choppy. But in the brush panel, simply disable the spacing option, and now when you paint, it should be smooth like this. Okay, so that's the brush settings. Next in the option bar is the range. It lets you choose the tonal range that your brush will affect. For example, if we set it to shadows, we can dodge this area here, and it'll affect more of the dark areas and less of the light areas. The exposure setting is pretty much the brush opacity, so the higher the number, the stronger the effect will be. I usually like to keep it around 50% or less, because if you want a stronger effect, you can always just paint over the same area again. But to change the setting on the fly, just press the number key on your keyboard. So typing 25 will set it to 25%. The other benefit of using a lower exposure setting is that you can use a feature called Build Up, which is this button right here. Here's how it works. So with the Build Up option turned off, when you paint a stroke like this, it's all one consistent strength. When you turn on build up, you can pause at a spot and the longer you stay here, the stronger the effect will be. Next up is the protect tones option. With this enabled, it'll preserve the hue and some of the tones so it's great for photographs. If you're doing stuff like digital paintings, you might want to turn it off. And finally, the last button here only matters if you're using a pressure sensitive pen instead of a mouse. For example, a Microsoft Surface tablet or a Wacom Intuos pen tablet. This option will make it so that when you press down harder with your pen, instead of increasing the strength, it'll increase the size instead. So now that you know all of these settings, you can start painting and see how it works. The final tip I want to give you is that instead of switching to the burn tool, you can just hold the Alt or Option key instead. It's much easier and faster than switching to the burn tool. And the other bonus is that your brush settings will stay the same. So that's how you use the dodge and burn tools. But the problem with this is that even though this is technically non-destructive editing because you have it on a separate layer and you have the original image as a backup, 
it's not what I would call fully non-destructive. Because the more you dodge and burn back and forth on a particular spot, the lower the image quality will get. So over time, this is somewhat destructive to your image quality. Plus, you can't really see what you're doing. There's a better way of dodging and burning, and it is to do it on a separate layer. But this layer isn't your photo, it's just a plain grey layer. It's a much better way to dodge and burn, and you should be using this method whenever you can. Here's how it works. I'm going to delete this layer because we don't need it anymore, and then I'm going to create a new layer. Press Shift Backspace to bring up the Fill tool. Select 50% grey from the drop down menu, and then click OK. If we dodge and burn on this layer, you'll see that it's basically creating lighter and darker spots. To make this layer blend in with your photo, set the blending mode to either soft light or overlay. Here's a comparison between using the soft light and overlay blending modes. Soft light is safer and the results are closer to what the dodge and burn tools typically do. But for other photos like landscapes, sometimes setting it to overlay will give you better colors. Using this method of dodging and burning is a double-edged sword because while you can do so much more, the tools don't work the same way. First, disable the protect tone option. This is because you're now painting on a grey layer, and there's no tones to protect. The other one is your range setting. Just leave it at mid-tones. Again, you're painting on a grey layer, and it's taking the tonal information from your current dodging and burning layer, not the tonal information from your actual photo. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the good stuff. So as you're dodging and burning, you can temporarily set the blending mode to normal to see what your layer looks like. You can also use the brush tool instead of the dodging and burning tools. You can change the layer opacity, or even use the levels tool by pressing Ctrl or Command L. This tool is great for changing the brightness and contrast of your layer. So if you want a stronger effect, then you can increase the contrast by dragging the two outer slider towards the middle like this and then adjusting the brightness. So that's how you dodge and burn on a separate layer. Next, I'm going to show you how to combine your dodging and burning with a luminosity mask. Luminosity masking is basically using your photo as a layer mask. So what this does is it makes your layer visible according to the brightness values of your photo. There's two ways to do luminosity masking. One is with a layer style and the other is with a layer mask. If you want to learn more about luminosity masking, then click here to watch this video. If you already know how to do luminosity masking, then you can do it with the layer style method. But for this tutorial, I will be showing it with the layer mask method so that you can see what's happening and it's also easier to understand for beginners. To start, click on the add layer mask button in the layers panel. Make sure that you have the layer mask selected and not the layer itself. It should have a white outline around it. Next, go to image, Apply Image. This tool lets you place any layer into your current layer or layer mask. In the drop down menu, select the layer with your photo. For us, it's the background layer. Set the blending mode to either multiply or normal. Make sure that the opacity is 100%, then click OK. Now we're using a photo as a layer mask. Hold the Alt or Option key and then click on the layer mask to see how it looks. So how it works is that the bright areas are where the layers will be more visible. The dark areas are where it's less visible. If we invert the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I, it'll do the opposite. So right now my layer is more visible in the dark areas which is what I want for my image. You can also use the levels tool by pressing Ctrl or Command L, and then you can adjust the contrast and brightness. So if I drag the two outer sliders towards the middle like this, it'll increase the contrast and then I can tweak the brightness. So after the adjustment, it looks much better. The layer will be visible in these white areas here, but it won't be visible in the bright area of the photo here. Now when we dodge and burn the layer, it will automatically mask itself based on the brightness values of your photo. If you're doing luminosity masking, you might need to have more than one of these dodging and burning layers to target different tonal areas. Here are some before and after examples of dodging and burning.
guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a tip that I forgot to add, and that is that a lot of times when you're dodging and burning, you'll typically have spots that are way too strong and you need to tone it down. So to do that, just paint over it with your brush tool with a 50% gray color. I typically like to set my brush opacity to around 10 or 20% and just keep painting over each spot until it looks the way that you want it to. Anyways, thanks for subscribing to my channel guys, I really appreciate it. I'm going to be making more videos for you guys, so stay tuned.